Hey everyone, Jason here, digital marketing consultant, and in this Google Tag Manager quick start guide, you're going to learn how to install the Facebook Pixel and track some events using Google Tag Manager. So timestamp table of contents in the description, and if you've already set up your Tag Manager account and already have it installed on your site, then go ahead and skip ahead to this timestamp where we start inside of Facebook setting up your Pixel. So we're first going to go through setting up your account, creating it and installing it on your site, whether you're using a page builder or WordPress, and then we'll dump and in, jump into Facebook. So if you've done that already, again, just skip to this part of the video where we actually start looking at Facebook. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into my screen here. So for this particular tutorial, you're going to need administrative access to your website. You're going to need, of course, access to your Facebook ads account, and you're going to need access to Google Tag Manager. Those are the only three things you're going to need in addition to having Google Chrome as your browser when we get through troubleshooting. So the very first thing we need to do is go into Google Tag Manager. You can just search Google Tag Manager on Google, and you'll be able to set up an account for free and we're going to go ahead and click on create account so we'll click on create account we'll just give it a name this is basically going to be your company name and then you'll go ahead and give the container name this is going to be the name of your website so if your company has multiple websites then just make sure you give the the whole account name your company name and then in, each individual website gets its own container name there's no need to create a separate account for every single website. Even if you're gonna be sharing this with people, that just adds an extra layer of, of headache later on. So we're gonna go ahead and click on web because we are setting this up for a website. And then we'll go ahead and click on create, accept all of their policies because we really have no choice anyway. And then we're going to be presented with our code. So this is the code that we're going to put on our website. Now the good news is once we put this code on our website, we never have to worry about opening up the back end of our website again, but we will need to do it this one time to get Tag Manager actually on our site. So we actually need both sets of codes, one that goes in the header and one that goes in the footer. That doesn't make any sense, don't worry, we're gonna go through several examples here. So with that, your Google Tag Manager is set up and ready to go. You can always click on your Tag Manager code to bring up this pop-up again. So it's very easy to access. Don't worry, it's not like it's you're never gonna get this again if you don't copy it right then and there. So now we're ready to actually install and add the tag onto our site. So to do that, we'll go back into Google Tag Manager. We'll go ahead and click on our tag ID here, and we're going to take these two pieces of code and put them on our website. Now, if you have a WordPress site, you're going to want to go into your theme settings, look for something like analytics, scripts, tracking, custom code in your theme settings because you need Tag Manager to go across your entire site. So if you're using a page builder for your landing pages, you're going to have to go into that plugin and add Tag Manager there and then you're also going to have to add Tag Manager in your theme. Now, if for whatever reason your theme doesn't have this option, there's actually a WordPress plugin that you can add to your site for free. I'll link up in the cards in the description to a deeper dive video that walks through how to install and use this plugin on a WordPress site. So if you're not seeing any place in your theme that allows you to add these in your header or opening of your body tag, then you can go ahead and use the plugin. Now what's very important is you make sure that you don't accidentally have Tag Manager going off multiple times, but we'll get into that when we get to the troubleshooting section at the end of the tutorial. So if you're going to be using some sort of page builder, you are using something like MailerLite, GetResponse, ClickFunnels, Kajabi, Kartra, LeadPages, Instapage, Unbounce, I think I should stop just listing things off here. There's going to be a section called Analytics and Custom Code or Tracking Scripts where you're going to be able to put in in your header and the opening of your body tag, the two places that you need to put your Tag Manager code. So here's how you'd copy and paste them over. We'd go over to Tag Manager, copy the head, header tag, and then go ahead and put it in the header tag section. We'll go back over to Tag Manager, copy the opening of the body tag, and if it just says body tag, that's okay. As long as it's body something and it's towards the top, you're good to go. Even if it doesn't say it's towards the top, most page builders know that it should be at the top, even if it doesn't tell you that. So we'll go ahead and copy that and then we'll paste it into the body tag section and we'll go ahead and click on save and continue. So again, it's very important that you make sure that you do this um, with your, not only your theme, but your page builders and your software as a service page builders so that Tag Manager is in fact across all of your pages. So we'll go ahead and click save and continue. And now we are ready to install the Facebook Pixel using Google Tag Manager. So we have our account set up. 
we have Tag Manager on our site, and later in this tutorial, we'll go through how to actually verify that everything's firing correctly. For now, let's just go ahead and get the Facebook pixel up and running. So of course, we need to head over to Facebook in your Facebook ads dashboard or your business manager, go ahead and navigate to whatever Facebook ads account you're setting up the pixel for. Just click in the top left and then you're going to want to go under measure and report and click on pixels. So if you've never set up a pixel before, your page is going to look slightly different than this. You'll just see a giant call to action to create your first pixel. But if you've already created it, just go ahead and click on your pixel here. Here I have JW brand, so that's the pixel we're gonna be using. Now that you're looking at your pixel, we'll go to the top right hand corner, click on setup, install pixel. And then when this pop-up comes up, we're actually gonna choose the first option. You might have seen some blog posts or videos that say you don't wanna use the partner integration, but I'll just go through why I think you should use it, which number one, it's just going to be a lot easier. And then number two, some of the disadvantages you can easily sidestep, but we'll get to that in a moment. So we'll go ahead and click on add using partner integration. And then of course, we're going to click Google Tag Manager, right? So we'll go ahead and click on Tag Manager. Now you might see the, some of the software you're using here. I highly recommend you always put your tags inside of Tag Manager and then put Tag Manager on whatever software you're using because it's just going to make your life so much easier. So we'll go ahead and click on Tag Manager here. It's going to ask if we want to set up automatic events and I recommend turning this on unless you are very familiar with your data layer and you know how to pull different variables out of it. If the past 15 seconds of what I said about the data layer makes no sense, then please just turn on automatic uh, advanced marketing. You can always turn this off later. You can always get more advanced and, and uh, put more control, take more control over your tracking. But when you're just getting started, it's so easy to break things. So please just let, let Facebook do a little more work than they probably need to and you'll be set and good to go with your event tracking. So we'll go ahead and click on continue and then it's going to ask you to sign into your account. So it's very important that when you're choosing what Google account here, you need to choose the Google account that has access to your container. So make sure it's your business account or whatever account you connected your um, container to. So we'll go ahead and allow access of course. And then if you have multiple containers, inside of your account or you have access to multiple accounts, you'll be able to choose your account and your container. If you just have one, it will just show up here. So I've chosen our awesome company and supercoolcompany.com and then we can go ahead and click finish setup. Now a really cool feature Facebook has introduced is an ability to actually create your own event tracking without having to access the data layer. Again, if data layer sounds foreign, don't worry about it. It's really not important when you're doing this for the first time. You can always Always hire some <laughs> analytics and data backend nerd to get this done for you later on if you need to be more advanced. And the keyword is if. Most of the time you can you can get what you need using this simple tool. So let's go ahead and go through it. So at this point, the Facebook pixel is actually on your site. So we're gonna take a quick, 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 a quick detour with events, and then we will go back to the setup and verification process. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put in a random landing page we have and click open a new window. It's going to quickly go through what this is and we'll go ahead and get started. So what Facebook is trying to do here is figure out what events you want tracked on this page. Now, because this is a landing page, what we want to track is people submitting the form, right? So Facebook is automatically detected. There's a form and a button, and it wants to know if we should start tracking this as a lead event. So I can go ahead and click on review, and then in the drop down menu here, you can actually choose if it's a lead, if it's a sale, um, and you can actually add your own events too. You can get really, really overly fancy and OCD if you'd like. Here, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at lead and confirm. And by doing this and clicking finish setup here, I'll go ahead and click finish. Now we have a event inside of Facebook without having to do much work. Like we're now tracking people entering their name, their, na their email, there's no name and email, <laughs> their email on this page as an event inside of our Facebook pixel tracking. And we didn't have to touch any code. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip giving feedback from here and then go ahead and click on close. So at this point, we have our Facebook pixel inside of Tag Manager that's on our site and we've set up one event. Now if we click on setup in the top and we click on set up new events 
and click using Facebook's uh, tool, you'll be able to go through the process we just went through for all of the pages on your site. It might feel a little tedious, especially if you have an e-commerce site, but it's definitely going to be a whole lot easier and ensure that you don't set something up or break something when you didn't intend to. Because that's, that's one of the worst things that can happen. You go through this process and you're like, why are sales double or triple what they're supposed to be, right? So we definitely we definitely don't want that because you can't be retroactive with your pixels and, and data. So with that, let's go ahead and jump back over to Google Tag Manager and you'll see that published a minute ago was a container. So to actually look at the different versions, so version number three here, we can actually go to the top right next to Workspace, click on versions, and then we'll see this is version three, the latest in live. We can click on it and we can see the Facebook Pixel ID was in fact installed. Now, a reason that a lot of, let's just say, advanced marketers or professionals don't like doing it this way is if you had, if you were working on anything inside of Tag Manager and you went ahead and went through this process, it automatically publishes everything, not just the Facebook pixel. So if you have any unsaved changes inside of Tag Manager, make sure you're done with those before you go through this process and this process will be a whole lot easier. So let's say for example, I was working on some triggers or I was setting something up with Google Analytics for some reason. Well, Facebook doesn't care, right? When you click, when you're inside of Facebook doing the pixel setup, they will just publish anything <laughs> that is in your workspace. And I'll show you where the workspace changes are in a moment. So just make sure that your latest, before you go through this process, everything inside of Tag Manager is published and you're happy with how it's working. So let's go ahead and go back to our workspace and you can see under the worst work workspace changes section, we don't have any changes. So we wanna make sure this section is blank when we go into this process. So let's go ahead and click on tags. We can click on our Facebook pixel ID and you can see that it's all configured properly. We didn't have to copy and paste any code. Facebook did that for us with their integration. So let's go ahead and go back to overview. And with that, we have the Facebook pixel on our website. But don't just take my word for it, it's time to actually verify. Now, if I went too fast or you need to go back to a particular section, remember there's a detailed table of contents in the description because this definitely is gonna be something you want to ensure that you got right. And of course, one of the ways of making sure you got it right is of course checking that everything is firing correctly and firing at the right time. I guess firing correctly and at the right time is the same thing. But anyway, I digress, just getting a little excited here. So let's go ahead and install Google Tag Manager Assistant. So what Google Tag Assistant does is it's a Chrome plugin that you can add to Chrome for free that will check the tags on your site. And then we're gonna go through the Facebook pixel tracker. So we'll go ahead and add Tag Assistant to Chrome, add the extension, and of course, accept all of the permissions again, and then go ahead and click on done. Now, what we'll need to do is go over to a sample landing page so you can see how this works. So I'm going to go to one of our landing pages here for one of our time, time blocking uh, downloads. So where all your Chrome plugins are, you'll see Tag Assistant, you'll want to click on enable and then refresh the page. So once you refresh the page, then all the information is going to start showing up. Um, something that's really cool is this is going to work on any website. So if you're curious what your competitors are doing, you can always see what kinds of tags are on their site. This is going to work across the board, unlike the preview. So we can go ahead and see that Google Tag Manager is in fact green. So green or blue means you're good to go. Yellow or red means eh, you might need to check it, right? But we'll get to yellow and red in troubleshooting. Now, the next thing we wanna do is make sure the Facebook pixel is in fact firing. Because if you can see here, Tag Manager is the only tag that's showing up. If, you have Google, if you're doing anything with Google Ads or Analytics, that would show up here too. But because Facebook and Google are not exactly the bestest of friends, the Facebook pixel, even though it's in Tag Manager, is not gonna show up here. So you need the Facebook pixel helper for that. So the pixel helper is showing us that the pixel is in fact on our site and it's tracking a page view, so we are good to go here. So the installing of the Facebook pixel helper, just go to Google, type in Facebook pixel helper, add to Chrome, accept, and you're good to go. So the exact same process. And when you have both Tag Assistant and the Facebook Pixel Helper saying that things are on your site and ready to go, you are good to go. You're done, congratulations. The Facebook Pixel is on your site. Now, chances are some things might not go as smoothly as what we just went through. So now it's time for some troubleshooting when things go wrong. And we'll start with the most common issue, which is you go to Tag Assistant and you get this blank stare, right? There's nothing here. So when you don't get anything in Tag Assistant, that means 
Tag Assistant cannot physically find the Tag Manager code on your site, which is a problem, right? So the first thing you want to do, if you're not seeing anything inside of Tag Assistant, is go back over to your WordPress site or your page builder and make sure there's code in the header and opening of the body tag. And then of course, go over to your page builder and make sure there's the code in the opening of your, in the header and the opening of your body tag. So that is a very quick way. You just want to make sure that the codes are actually on your site so that tag manager actually tells tag assistant, tag manager. So tag assistant tells you that tag manager is actually on your site. It's getting tongue twisted with all the tags here, right? So in this particular example, let's say we went through, we pasted them in, we made sure everything's working, and now we see the tag is yellow. So that means something might be wrong. So when we click on the tag, we'll be able to see at the bottom here where to optimize, and you can simply just take this exact code, you can copy it, and then just search in Google or your favorite search, search browser, doesn't really matter, and you're gonna find some forms that will talk about what exactly might be wrong. Now, most of the time with the yellow, it's still good to go. I mean, red is typically the only time where you need to uh, actually be concerned, but most of the time, blue, blue, so blue and green means you're good to go. You don't even need to check. Yellow means, eh, there might be something wrong, but it's probably okay. And then red means, yeah, it's broken and probably needs to be, most likely needs to be fixed. Now, the other issue that may come up is you're looking at this and you're saying, okay, I know I can see Tag Manager, but I can't see the other tags that I installed or I can't see the Facebook pixel. Well, in that particular instance, you wanna go back inside of Tag Manager and look at this workspace changes because you may have just not published the container. You might have set everything up and then forgotten to publish. So this is another common thing that we see a lot where things have been set up correctly, but we just forgot to hit the submit button at the top right to actually make the changes live and publish publish them. Now, the other thing you can do is go into preview mode. So this is kind of the last ditch thing you can do to really, really dig deep and troubleshoot what the heck is going on if anything is wrong. So inside of Chrome, you need to be using a Chrome browser to do this. You can go and click on preview and then this giant orange dialog box is gonna pop up letting you know that your tag manager in site is in preview mode. So we can go back over to our landing page or any page on our site where we're trying to figure out things and then refresh it and and this little box at the bottom, or box, not really little, but this dialog box is gonna pop up at the bottom and it's gonna show you all of your tags. It's gonna show you what fired on the page and then it's also gonna show you what didn't fire on the page. Now, something that is important to note is the way I showed you earlier to set up your Facebook events it's not gonna show up here because those Facebook events are being tracked directly by Facebook. If you wanted to track your Facebook events as, as tags being fired inside of Google Tag Manager, then you would have had to set up some custom triggers and you'd actually have to splice your Facebook code. And that's why I just definitely don't recommend doing it. So don't freak out when you don't see your Facebook events here because they're, they're not gonna show up here. They're gonna show up inside of your Facebook pixel manager inside of your ads, Facebook ads account. So here you can see we have Google Analytics, a conversion linker from Google ads, and then the Facebook pixel ID have all fired on the site. And then we can see a sign up has not fired yet. And that's, that's for uh, Google ads tracking, not Facebook, right? And that's why we're not seeing the Facebook leads event. And of course you can always click on the Facebook pixel helper at the top to see what events are being tracked on the page. And so with that, you are good to go. The Facebook pixel is on your site using Google Tag Manager. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dive marketing tutorials and click by click videos just like this one. We do a lot of these on the channel. I know it's not the funnest part of marketing, but it does help you stay organized to make sure that you're tracking all of your conversions correctly so you can improve your traffic and of course your ads. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more deep dive videos just like this one and check out that table of contents. And until the next, keep building the business you love.